So hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. Um, we're using Zoom tonight again as we look forward to the Armagh and Donegal Ulster semi-final taking place on Saturday. Um, so to join us we have again Paddy Savage who has been with us the whole way previewing Armagh's season. Um, joining us again is Kieran McKeever who also joined us last week in the Dairy preview. And we're welcoming Kevin Cassidy here this evening to talk us through Donegal's chances this weekend. Um, so I suppose, Kevin, we'll start with you. Um, you sort of had a, a bad relationship with Armagh during your playing days. Um, I was just looking through a bit of history. From 2002 to 2010, Armagh and Donegal played eight times. Armagh won six, drew one. And the day you got the goal in Bally Buffet was your only win. Square ball, too. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Big heart, he didn't know what was coming at him. Um, do you know what? We didn't have a great record against Armagh, to be honest with you. And back then, Armagh were the benchmark. There was no two ways about it, just in terms of their preparation, in terms of how they were, how they approached the game um, outside of the training pitch, if you like, in preparation and everything. And listen, we just could never match that uh, on the big days. And you know, they did definitely set the bar. And I'm sure the lads there, the likes of Neil McGee is still there, Michael Murphy is still there. Do you know, those lads would remember that time that Donegal would probably, or Ma probably had their foot in our necks for a long, long period of that that um, decade. So, listen, they, they'll be trying to make up for every every opportunity that they get now, you know. And Kieran, you, you come into that team around 05, 06. That, obviously, that was Armagh's golden years. Um, you's, you's what, you would experience a couple of wins over Donegal I suppose what, what, what way did you view that Donegal team as sort of contenders but they just couldn't get over the line against you yeah it's probably as Kevin said like you know Armagh had a stranglehold in, in Donegal in that, in that period you know, and, you know, and deep down like you know Armagh knew how dangerous and how good Donegal were as a team and as individual players back then you know if you go back to that era like you know we always were very cautious going into their matches because of you of the the capabilities that Donegal had. But you know, it probably goes by us back to what Kevin said there. You know, with the likes of Michael Murphy and Neil McGee now, they'll want to keep that stranglehold. And back then, like you know, Armagh had the foot on Donegal's throat, and every opportunity they got to put a nail in the coffin, they did it. Like and wanted to do it to keep Donegal down. And you know, and and the 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 thing has changed and and swung now that. Um, you know, Donegal have that momentum over Armagh at the present minute, you know, since uh, Jim McGuinness came on board. Like, and, you know, and if you read Jim's book and, and listen to some of the players that, that he managed, like, you know, his whole big thing was to break the stranglehold in Ulster football from Armagh and Tyrone. And, you know, and, and Donegal have done that and and they see that now and they want to keep that stranglehold. And, you know, and I think this is a, an opportunity and a time for Armagh to, to break that stranglehold um, the way Donegal did. 10 years ago. And Paddy, what Kian's sort of saying there, like Armagh um, are the rising team now and Donegal are the, the team going for three Ulster Championships in a row. Um, they've made two All-Irelands, obviously, 2012-2014. This is a much different time and a much different Donegal team that Armagh's going to face, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Like, you know, I'm looking at a completely different era. Like, uh, it was actually amazing the impact that we played Donegal. Um, I was just looking here. We played them in the championship every single year for um, you know, for six seasons, uh, you know, and we're playing them in semi-finals uh, as you know, as, uh, as well. There was that other in semi final in two thousand and three, and like back then, you know, there's great like I have great memories of those games uh, because you know when, when I'm at, well, they were the better team and they deserve you know to win the the vast the vast majority of them. Um, and then there's that there's obviously that close game in, in 2007 and the Ulster final. Like those couple of like those couple of Ulster finals that were in Croke Park, everybody sort of remembers the the 2005 ones against Tyrone, but the, those ones against Donegal, they were actually fantastic occasions, and uh, there was even actually bigger attendances. There's obviously there were a lot of Donegal people in Dublin, like. But um, I also thought that uh, that 2004 um, Ulster uh, final. Um, if that was probably the best arm I ever played, you know, that team. Um, I think that was maybe just just when they hit their peak in terms of, you know, a complete performance, uh, you know, a complete performance on the day. They were just brilliant that day. Um, 
Yeah, great memories from the Nordies. Um, in terms of the um, you know, in terms of the, the, the time since then, look, Donny Gall have been operating at a at a higher level than we have. Um, there's no doubt about that. Though to be fair, uh, one of the brighter um sort of parts of the uh the last decade or so was that performance that Armagh did put up in, in the quarter final in 2014. You know, I suppose the famous uh. You know the, the famous Donny Gall victory over Dublin might never happen if uh, if Armagh had just probably squeezed another point or two out of that game. So you know, I actually remember we went in in 2015 with a lot of confidence from that, thinking that we maybe weren't too far off. But it's, it's taken us a while. Um, it's taken us a while really to get hopefully competitive again and get up into into Division One. So yeah, no, very very different landscape now, Sean, than uh, than it was back in the noughties. And Kevin, I suppose a lot is made of that 2010 game. Um, obviously, Armagh, I think they won by nine points in the end. Jamie got two goals in Cross McGlenn. And that was such a big turning point for you and a lot of the players. And um, Jamie Guinness said himself, like, that was a that was a massive turning point for you is that you were ranked 19th in the country or something at that stage. And the following year, you were um, Ulster champions. And within two years, Donegal Royal Ireland champions. So... I suppose you have Armad to thank maybe for a bit of your success. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, we always wanted to get up to that bar. And listen, that day in Cross McGlenn was probably the darkest day for everybody that's still involved or was involved with that squad. Listen, even that day, um, every day I played against Armad, our tactics were to go out and play man v man. We've never had a sweeper. We never even really matched up players, would you believe it or not? Like, that's how far back we were in terms of preparation and like 2010 Jamie just destroyed us uh, and yeah and, you know just got got the you know we didn't even really have a plan for him whoever was on him was supposed to mark him and that was it you know whereas nowadays there'd probably be four Donegal men hanging off him but listen that's the way it is and things have changed and once Jim McGinnis came in he was part of those teams so the first thing he was going to do was going to nullify threats on the opposition and cut out their space and try and create more space for us. Um, the likes of Tyrone and Armagh did it to us in the past and Jim was part of those teams. So he brought that kind of mindset into our own, our own game. And obviously then 2011, the whole mindset just changed. And once we had that structure and once we had that competitiveness and we were still in games with 15 or 20 to go, we had the ball players then to do the damage, you know. And Paddy, just looking at a bit of uh, history, and I don't know how much it, it matters, um, but I thought it was interesting. I know you've seen my tweet today. I was tweeting that Arma Matt Donegal in the Ulster semi final in 1993 in Breffney Park. And I was thinking, was that a time Donegal were obviously All Ireland champions and contenders in 93 and Arma were a team on the rise? So is it something similar maybe this time around? Yeah, no, I remember that game well. That was the first, uh, first Arma match I was ever at. So I'll not forget that one. Had to be uh, had to be stuck in the in the back of the yokes, and my cousins didn't see that I was getting the game, and they uh, and they weren't. Um, but uh, yeah, that was yeah. I suppose maybe it's a similar. It is a similar enough um, you know situation. But you know, our, our ma back then, and you know, the the, the played the played Donny Gall and Ulster final like maybe back in nineteen ninety. You know, so they weren't. They hadn't been waiting as long on a bit of a run in Ulster. Um, and I suppose that was that was the longest uh, that was also a championship run ever not to get that final because Armagh ended up playing uh, they ended up playing six um, six matches and not getting not getting to, to a final it was it was John, John Duffy maybe kicked the equaliser in uh, in Breffney Park and then then Duffy, Donegal yeah. stuffed them the next day so maybe there's one uh, well look the one thing we can be sure they won't be the same uh, Sean is that there'll not be a There'll not be another replay um, because we'll, we'll be finished it from Saturday one way or the other. I suppose, Kieran, um, going to this weekend then, I'm just thinking about a lot of the press and the media this week with Kerry being out, his, um, with Kerry being out on come Sunday, either May or Galway is going to be out. That leaves sort of two top, top contenders, either May or Galway and Donegal um, to challenge Dublin. That's been the... the narrative the whole week and I suppose with Kerry being out and all the talk being about this semi-final that Donegal and Dublin are going to play in does that leave our man an opportunity and I'll, I'll give Kevin a chance to respond maybe he'll tell me that Donegal's not taking their eye off the ball but is there maybe an opportunity there that our man will catch Donegal in the hop? Yeah, look, you know obviously um, all our, our, 
or rightly um, second second favourites now to win the All Ireland, and and you got to go with that on Mars. You know they're playing a higher standard of football. They've been knocking on the door this past couple of years, and they deserve that um, that that credit to be to be in that position. You know, but um, you know overall, I think I think Armagh will be quite content with with all the hype that Donegal is getting um, this week leading into the match, and a lot of people talking. You know about a Dublin Donegal um, All Ireland semi final. You know, but on the when you flip that back round, like you know, you know the personnel that's that's in that Donegal set up, they won't fall into that mind that mind um, set that maybe Kerry went to play Cork with last week. And um, you have the likes of Charlie Ace in the backroom team, Declan Bonner, Stephen Rochford, Neil McGee, Michael Murphy, Hugh McFadden. With these boys will see this as an opportunity to learn from Kerry last week and they'll be sharp going into to Breffney Park on Saturday. But, you know, Armagh will be quite content. Um, they'll be going into Sat, they're low-key. Um, I know that most of their players personally still, and I know the back management team and backroom team, and they'll be preparing to the best that they can to, to cause an upset on Saturday. Well, what do you think, Kevin? Is maybe Kerry getting beat last weekend a good thing for Donegal? That'll show them that, you know... The underdog has a has a chance with the weather conditions this time of year, and obviously the knockout element of it. Yeah, definitely. But I agree with Kieran there. There's there's enough strong personalities in that dressing room to make sure that after the one against Tyrone, it would have been all about listen, lads, this counts for nothing unless we take the silverware. That's 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 what we've been driving into them. Yes, they know that the Dublin game's down the line if they get there, but. I think they're around long enough now to know that you can be caught in any day, and particularly now at this time of the year. If had this game been the summer time, you'd probably be saying, "Listen, it's going to be very tough for Amar to beat Donegal." But listen, on a wet, slippery day, anything can happen, and, and I mean that. Like, and I mean that across the board. Down in my own Galway, you seen it Cork and Kerry last week. Conditions are just going to be a leveler this year for everybody um, until probably you get to Crow Park and the, the surface is hard and, and, and the pitch is dry and I think but listen our boys will be definitely um, wary of Armagh coming this weekend and it's just all about getting the performance for them this weekend well, Paddy I suppose something we do on this podcast a lot is maybe look at matchups and how things are going to line out um, uh, something coming out of the throne on Donegal game was um, Donegal's physical presence around the middle of the field that Tyrone couldn't match that, that they didn't have enough, enough size and enough power around that middle to match Donegal. Armagh would hope that they do have a good enough midfield. You know, you have the likes of... Um, now, Grimley didn't start the last day, but he's likely to play this weekend. Um, Oshin O'Neill, Stephen Sheridan, Jarley O'Burns all in there. Could we see maybe a good old-fashioned midfield battle this week? Yeah, I suppose look when you mention all those names, you can also put you can also put rain in there if you need to. Um so I think that's a you know a big advantage RMA have is that if things aren't working in that um you know in, in that area um that, that you can change, you know, you can change things up. Um in terms of an old fashioned midfield battle, you know, the games just change. I mean, you know, I mean I was, I was looking at some of the, the kick out statistics uh from the um the two quarter finals and like what's amazing is how you know, how good teams are at uh, you know at, at keeping possession even out the field you know the, the those longer kickouts like you know it was clear when you you know, at that, you know at the county level if you're you know dropping it anywhere much below seventy five percent it's a, you know, it's a bit of a disaster like you know so it, yeah look you know all, look all, all these areas of the pitch are going to be important Sean you know. Um, and you know, Armagh, you know, Armagh need to get as much ball as they possibly can, as much quality ball into their um into their forward line. So look, the, the needs you know, the need the likes of midfielders to be performing, no doubt about it. And Kevin, Paddy sort of touched on it there. Um, if Armagh are struggling around the middle, that Rain O'Neill can come out from full forward and play in midfield. And I know against Derry, Chrissy McCaig was doing very well around the middle of the field on Rain O'Neill, so they put him inside and. Rain still didn't have the impact he would have liked to have had, but it took Chrissy McCaig out of the game. Um, that's probably not going to happen this weekend. Neil McGee is going to pick up Rain O'Neill, I would imagine. He probably doesn't have the same effect going forward that Chrissy McCaig would have. And maybe he's in the twilight of his years now. Do you see Rain O'Neill playing midfield? And if so, does Neil McGee follow him? Or 
does he just mark whoever comes inside? Uh, no, they won't follow him out the field anyway. Um, if, he, if Ryan plays out there, you know, one of the other lads would probably pick him up. You could have Thompson there, big Hugh McFadden, um, Langan. It just depends one of them lads will pick him. But I think for Armagh to have a chance, they're going to have to keep Rio O'Neill as close to goal as possible. Um, he's touching it there. I think for Armagh to be in this game, they have to have their kick outs absolutely nailed at the weekend. Um, I watched Tyrone and they just abandoned the short and they just kept hitting it long and, and Donegal absolutely destroyed them out around, around the middle and Tyrone just kept doing it now and that's why they lost the game. If you look back, if they were able to retain two or three of those kicks by going short, you know, I would have denied Donegal that platform and listen, Donegal have four big monsters around that middle and like I think Armagh are probably one of the teams who can match them physically in the middle. Um, you named like probably Oshins there and Jarla Gold Burns and even Grugan's good in the air. So for me, it all depends on how Kieran McGinney decides to go tactically on his kickouts. I suppose Kieran, we're talking about Rain O'Neill coming out and whether he will or not. Um, Michael Morphy's definitely going to come out. He's not going to stand in full forward the whole time. So I suppose who do you see picking up Michael Morphy? There's a couple of options like. Kendi will probably start on him if Murphy starts full forward. Do you see Kendi pick him up? Or maybe will Aidan Falker be more suitable and maybe Aidan Falker will attack more and take Murphy out of his comfort zone? Or will Stephen Sheridan or somebody just be like glued to him and track him wherever he goes? Yeah, look, you know, and, and that's the task at RMA Fierce this weekend, like, you know, is trying to curtail Michael's influence on the game. Um, you know, granted, you know, a lot of people say he had a quiet game against Jerome, but if you look back in that second half, he controlled the whole tempo of, of the game. Um, what pace Donegal wanted to play at, if they wanted to play a quick football, he dictated that in the middle third of the pitch. And you go back to the last 10 minutes when they wanted to play a, a controlled base game and keeping possession, Michael was to the fore of that, you know, and and, and that's one of the big um, big keys to the Varma have a chance to win on Saturday is, is trying to curtail that. And you know, when I believe that um, Aidan Falker might get that job at the weekend, because you know we all know um, the the skill set that Aidan has and can take to the table. He can drag Michael up in the full forward position, and he can play inside. He plays inside at club level, and he he can cause Michael um, loads of problems on the other end of the field. I suppose Kevin, if, if something like that was to happen, how did Donegal counteract that? If the, if Michael Murphy does find himself having to track the likes of Aidan Falker, how did Donegal? Kind of act that and, and keep Murphy where they want him, sort of further up the field. Um, to be honest, with you, Donegal don't really have a strategy for that. Murphy's given the license to do whatever. And if you look back in our games last year and our games this year, for Donegal to win in All Ireland, they're going to have to be able to do it without Michael Murphy, if that makes sense. Because Tyrone kind of took him out of the game for large parts of it. Once you go up against a, a Dublin or, or a Mayo, Michael Murphy's probably going to be taken out of the game more than likely. So if we're to go places, the likes of your Jamie Brennan's, your Kieran Thompson's, your Oshin Gallons, they're the lads, believe it or not, that we're 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 putting most of our hopes on because Donegal are prepared for teams to take Michael Murphy out, and then it's about the rest of them standing up. And Paddy, something we talk about and sort of everybody talks about when discussing Armagh is their attacking unit and their the four or five outstanding attackers. And I suppose Donegal, we could say the same thing about them. And Kevin mentioned him, the likes of Ashing Gallen and, you know, Paddy McBurty was confirmed fit this week. So could we see a shootout or how do you see this going? I mean, depending on the weather too, Sean, like, you know, if... Um... If we have, we have conditions like we've had some of the uh, some of the games last couple of weekends, then you know it's going to be hard to get uh, it's going to be hard to get uh, big amounts of scores up. Um, but there's one sorry, I just wanted to pick up there. You see what Kevin said about you know the um, Donegal attacking that thrown kick out. Like I just had a look at the um, at some of the stats there. Like of the uh, there's 20 kickouts from thrown that they've tried to put into that sort of middle area between the two forty fives. And Donegal won 12 of that, so 12 of those 20 on turn kick. Like, Armagh have to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, like, if that happens on Saturday, it'll be completely disastrous. Now, it didn't happen against Derry, but you're stepping, obviously, we're stepping up in in, uh, um, in, in, comp in, in competition levels. 
you know, our, how important our forwards going to be, Sean. Like, you know, this are you know, the, the, this our team's identity is the you know, the quality that it has up front. Um, you know what it's you know, the, when it's going well, what it's capable of uh, of doing. You know when you have the likes of Ryan O'Neill, Rory Grubin, Supi Campbell, Jamie Clark, Oshin O'Neill, um, and when they are all playing um, well, you know the fact that you have such a threat, um, and you know so look, they're definitely going to be they're going to be vitally important. And you know, probably the other thing that I would say, Sean, is the it's a bit of an ego statement, but. Um, we're probably going to have to get a goal out of them, you know, at least, you know, at least one. Um, and, you know, hopefully if we take, you know, uh, you know goal chances tend to come, you know, you, you'll usually have at least one or two in a match. And I suspect just on, on Saturday, we're going to have to, we're going to have to take them when, uh, you know, when they do arrive. I suppose, Cian, we're talking about Armagh having such a good attack. We're talking about them getting plenty of bodies around the midfield and plenty of um, to match Donegal's strength around the middle. And I suppose you, you can't do both. Um, do you see Armand maybe trying to hold somebody like Stephen Campbell or Jamie Clark or somebody in reserve? So that maybe in the last 20 minutes, if the game's still tight, that they can come on and sort of match Donegal's bench, if they like Sashin Gowan coming on or even McBurty if he doesn't start, that both sides will have impact subs coming on. Yeah, look, you know, it's, it's you know, it's it's hard to see. You know, I think you'll go, you'll not vary too much from the team that started against um, Derry the last day. You know, you obviously have had, had Niles Grimley in, in reserve on that day and he came on and made an impact of the game. You know, whether Niles starts this weekend and that means someone else has to go to the bench to make an impact. You have Jamar Hall that we didn't see feature against Derry the last day can come on and make an impact, you know. So I think the options are there on the bench for Armad that, you know, if somebody's not performing, and we need an impact with 20 minutes to go. You know, regardless of what team geezer and the boys pick, you know, there will be somebody in reserve to add something to the game. Like, you know, and you know, and we always talk about this attack, attacking team that Armagh have, you know, and you go back to, you know, I always like saying go back to 2017 when this process of this team started for geezer, you know, when they got rid of all us old foes that were, were hanging on and, and, and carrying too many knocks, you know, and and that's when this team really, really started. Like, it was back in 2017, you know, and everybody was talking about the attacking brand of football that they played that year, and there's no question about it. But, you know, you've got to flip that on its head. And when we went to Crow Park in 2017, and Tyrone beat us by 17 points, you know, you know that squad has learned a lot from that day. They, they know their attacking abilities, but at the same time, they knew that they had to get the balance right between attack and defend, and how to shut off that middle third of the pitch to compete with the big boys. And, you know, and over that last three years, they've done that. They've went from Division 3 to Division 1. And now Saturday is another step in that direction. And, you know, and we talk about kickouts and, and, and that middle third of the pitch. And I believe Armagh have got to take that to a war zone on Saturday. And I think there's ample opportunity there to get a pattern on his kickouts. Um, we know how dangerous he is on, on, on long kickouts. But I feel that Arma have the personnel and the aerial ability to compete with Donegal in that middle section. But the minute that ball hits the ground, they've got to be aggressive and they've got to be hungry that the hunt them breaks that McHugh and Mongan and Paul Brennan and Thompson and Langan and these boys hound on straight away. And, and Arma has got to be aggressive and push to them, to them breaks on Saturday and get the. Uh, so, sorry, Brookie, just on that one, like, you know, when you, when you said. You know, I, was, I was quoting them statistics from uh, Throne, but uh, you know, if actually you look at the Donegal kickouts, you know, the ones that went out of that middle sector, Throne did okay on them. Like, the Throne broke, you know, the, the broke even in the middle. So, like, if our man can do that on the Donegal kickout, you know, you'd be, you'd be pretty happy, wouldn't you? Without a doubt. I suppose, Kevin, um, just reading on your um, Gaelic Life article today. You sort of suggested that you think Armagh is going to go defensive this weekend. That's that's I think not for Donegal, but as an outsider looking in, I think if Armagh go defensive, it's going to play against them because Donegal are so used to playing against that system. Um, if Armagh drop off into their shell, they might stay in the game for 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, but I think eventually Donegal will pick them off. It's just because they're so well coached at working against that system. So I think if I was Kieran McGinney this weekend, I'd be trying something 
completely opposite to that and try and take the game to Donegal? I suppose, Paddy, just to finish up, um, you know, we always finish up with predictions and how we see the game going. Obviously, we've seen the underdog always has a chance. We've seen that so far in the championship. We've seen how big the knockout effect is, how the weather conditions have affected games. So how highly do you rate Armagh's chances this weekend? I think I'd be really, really hopeful we'll be competitive. Um, you know, that we're, that we're capable of, you know, having, having it so there's m- moments in the second half where we have a chance of winning. It's very, very hard to predict an Armagh victory. Like, we've been talking, Sean, about how this is a step up. Donegal are an established Division One team, All-Ireland contender, quarter-final, Super 8 uh, team every year, year in, year out. Armagh aren't that yet. They want to be, um, and they probably have the, you know, we're really hopeful they have the potential to be, but they haven't done it yet. Don't need all of the favourites and under the rightful favourites. But yeah, absolutely. I think Armagh have a chance. Um, you know, the, as I say, where the weather comes into it. Um, I think any team that'll, that, that can put out the, the set of forwards that Armagh have, how dangerous they are, has a chance in a game. Um, so look, you know, hopeful rather, you know, hope more than expectation, maybe. But there's, you know, there's reason for that hope. And Kevin, I suppose, what, what's the feeling like in Donegal? You know, we spoke at the start about um, the Donegal and Armagh rivalry and sort of it has flipped on its head now and Donegal are on top um, and obviously want to keep on top. Is there a fear in Donegal that this team could take their eye off the ball or are you confident of, of getting over the line against Armagh and marching on Donald's final? I can't see them taking their eye off the ball. I think if they are to be caught, that it's it's going to be the weather might have a, have a huge say in it, and, and our mass hunger might be there. And you know, I think if our ma can dig deep in that middle third and they can really put their body on the line and come out even if not one in that, then they definitely, definitely have a chance. Like, there's no doubt about it. Um, I don't think our boys will take the eye off the ball and take the game for granted, but I do think. If it becomes a dogfight, and if our man can hang in there, then they definitely have a chance. Like, and Kieran, what do you think? Armagh's obviously now up to Division One. Um, they've shown last year against beating Mullahan and putting it up to Mayo that they can compete at that standard. And we've spoke that Donegal are bigger than that. They're obviously all Ireland contenders. So, how do you rate Armagh's chances this weekend? Is there is there a chance for an upset? There's probably two things. Like, um, first thing is. I don't believe, you know, that if there's bad weather, this will take this game to a level. Or, um, you know, I think the better the conditions, the better football arm I'll play. Um, you know, the worst conditions, I think it will suit Donegal a lot better. Um, you know, Kevin probably know the, the weather up around Donegal. They're probably playing that nearly all season round. Um, remember, you still slag Neil McGee at the international rules that whenever he caught the ball, just hand pass it to his right or left hand side, and I'll take and kick it for him. And he used to always say back to me, you come out and play off the, the wide Atlantic um, coast, he says, in Greedor, and tell me how many balls you're kicking in the wintertime. So um, I think the, the worse the weather is, the more it will suit Donegal. Um, you know, and then on the second point is, there's no love loss between Armand and Donegal. Absolutely no love loss. Um, go back to last year in, in the Division Two National League match, there was a kick of the ball between the teams um, and horrendous conditions up in Bally Buffet. I know they've played three or four times in the last two years in, in, in pre-season friendly matches. There's been no love loss and there's been a kick of the ball between the matches as well in the end games. And I definitely believe that there's a huge opportunity here for Armagh to, to turn Donegal over on Saturday. I'm going for an Armagh win, Sean. Good stuff, Cian. Um Expected that. <laughs> um, so thanks very much for joining us, fellas. We look forward to that game. On, on Saturday and also good luck to the ladies this weekend they take on Mayo in the last round of the group stage is essentially a quarter final um, so good luck to them good luck to the fellas on Saturday both games are on Saturday um, so thanks very much fellas for joining us and we look forward to the game on Saturday and hopefully Armagh getting through to an Ulster final Cheers lads uh-